YouTube is it going? The Godows is back with the third episode of the Top 100 NFL Players, according to you guys, the fans. There were ballots created, and now we have a Top 100. A lot of info on your screen, and again, a massive shout out to these guys down here. That's their Twitter accounts, Cam Sullivan, Astronaut. Cameron Sullivan put this all together, made all the graphics. Wasn't possible without him, so huge shout out to him. Appreciate you guys for always helping us out. You'll find a playlist on the channel uh, with this series i'm gonna get my ass out of the way here there we go aiden hutchinson comes at number 40 but in this video we are going from 40 down to 11 in the fourth and final video we will go over the top 10 and then possibly i'll make a video just showing rapidly showing all the top 100 uh but aiden hutchinson comes at number 40 we had quite a few lines here highest rank was 15 for him um yeah hutchinson took a big step up last year as we kind of expected a you know young prospect like that continuing to grow would make a lot of sense He's a playmaker. You, know, you see him dropping in coverage. Uh, I think one spot, one area where he could get even better, maybe make himself an elite pass rusher, is maybe just having more of a presence on the outside, off the edge, um, you know, keeping contained, things like that. He's actually a phenomenal, one of the best in football out of the edge rushers when rushing inside. So he is actually extremely good at that. That's where his strength's at. And just knowing where the ball's at and being a big-time playmaker. Um so he comes in at 40. I feel like we've seen some lions here. Uh, coming in at 39 is Derrick Henry, who is with the you know, longtime Tennessee Titan, now Baltimore Ravens. So it's going to be fun to watch that, how he does with Lamar Jackson. The team's got to worry about Lamar running, but also Derrick Henry running, and that involves different different style of different plays, different types of runs, and uh, you know misdirection, things like that. So it's going to be fun to watch. be very difficult to game plan for that. So he's at 39. Highest rank 15. Does he have an even better season? Because like we talked about the things that exist with the Ravens that could actually create him, cause him to be more of a problem. So we'll see if he climbs up the ranks perhaps. Uh, we have a guard at 38. Chris Lindstrom from the Atlanta Falcons is kind of you know, making his way to the, being one of the very top guards in football, if not the top guy. He got a big contract recently for a reason. So he kind of took that that big step maybe two years ago. Um, and it's even more of a step every, every year here. So I would imagine he continues to grow. Got a really good quarterback, you know, running the show now and Kirk Cousins. So that actually could help uh, new coaching staff. So, yeah, we'll see. Lindstrom could even step up uh, going forward here. We had back-to-back -back Falcons. Jesse Bates, Falcons free safety at 37, highest rank 16. Maybe if you think about playmakers, just playmakers on the defensive side of the ball may, may be up there for that number one playmaker. When I say, when I say playmakers, I, I, yeah, I think of guys that get, in their, that get their hands on the ball, just create plays, create turnovers. You know, Deron Bland probably was that guy who's a corner from last year, but just in general, who is that guy? I look at a guy like Jesse Bates here. Um, so excited to see him in year two with the Falcons. You know, he went from the Bengals to the Falcons and he didn't lose a step. He might've even got better. So I love to see that because you see sometimes defensive players, especially the safety position, they take a step down when that happens. Not Bates. 36 going to be Quinn and Williams. Uh, the Jets star defensive tackle. Another guy that can continue to get better. He was an elite prospect or come, you know, coming out a few years ago, was already polished, but also was kind of known as a little raw. Like, his best football is definitely way ahead of him. So now's that time for him to get going even more. He's already kind of a star player, highest rank 11. I'm surprised he's not a little higher than 36, but this is where the fans have him at. It's really, I'm, I haven't seen any of these, actually, So because somebody else, Cam Sullivan, made the graphics. So I'm just excited to react to these and see what we got. Jalen Ramsey, 35. I think on the actual top 100, he might have been around that range as well. Does he still have it in him? Let's we'll see him as a full-year starter with the Dolphins. I definitely think he's got to be talented still. It's not like he's at that part of his career where he's declining or anything like that. Uh, one of the more physical corners in football comes up, makes big-time tackles, and obviously very solid in coverage. So I'm really excited to watch him uh, in this new-look Dolphins defense. Him and Kendall Fuller should should be a really good pairing at the cornerback position in Miami. So somebody ranked him as high as 11. I mean, just a couple years ago, a few years ago, Super Bowl year for the Rams, like he was known as easily a top 10 player in the NFL. So um, full year starting, you know, healthy from the start. Could he get back there? I, you know, I, I we can't really rule it out. Nick Chubb coming, coming in at 34. So we've seen a lot of running backs in this list. Chubb pretty high, highest ranked 10. I mean, when he's on the field, he looks that good. Like he looks like he's right after McCaffrey, you know, second best running back in football, you know, battling him for the best. 
Um, just got to be healthy. We'll see when he returns this year. But, uh, you know, somebody ranked him as high as 10. But he is that dominant. Just got to be healthy. Uh, but we see him at 34. 33, Devontae Adams, a guy that hasn't lost a step at all. Uh, and the quarterback play really struggled last year. So should be a little little better, whether it's Gardner Minshew or, or O'Connell in his second year. Uh, but Adams is always open and always making big-time plays, coming at 33. Um, highest ranked 10. Yeah, I'm surprised if, if I had to guess that the fans would rank him a little higher, but 33 is pretty high. You know, talking about just, just the best of the best players here. Justin Herbert comes in at 32, highest rank 6. Uh, yeah, I think he's a, maybe a little low. I, I think people get on him about uh, maybe not closing out games, not winning games, but this is an unreal talent. You know, there's some of the throws that he makes that not too many guys can make that throw, you know, those throws there. So, um, could I think he takes another step up. He is lacking in the receiver department right now but on the Chargers, but Harbaugh out there, you know, supposed to be entering his prime, Herbert, that is. I, I think he could take another step up. So, um, I, I think we'll be. I think fans, you guys will be ranking him a little higher, than, a bit higher than 32 after this year. Zach Martin at 31, yeah, kind of well known as the most consistent, one of the best guards, the best guard in football over the last several years. Highest ranked seven, um, number 31 overall. Is he going to get passed by some of these other guards that are, uh, you know, catch him? The guard position's really been valued a lot more lately, so you love to see that. See some of the guys in free agency getting paid 20 million. Uh, around that range per year. It's a lot for a guard, So, uh, but it is very important. Uh, 30, another offensive lineman with a tackle, Tristan Wirfs. Uh, sounds like him and the Bucks are far apart on a, a new contract, but I'm sure it'll get done. Um, you know, kind of, they're going to have to go off with Sewell and Dar- Darisaw just got paid recently. So he's going to get a lot, going to get a lot. Highest ranked six. Yeah, one of the better tackles. He proved that he could play right and left tackle. So that is huge as well. So he comes in at 30. 29, back-to-back Buccaneers, Antoine Winfield Jr., who just was made the highest-paid safety in football, highest rank eight, uh, number 29 overall. Big-time defensive back, you know, big-time playmaker as a free safety, but good up in the slot area as well. So those are the type of safeties that are the most valuable. It's for a reason. They're versatile. They can do multiple different things. They can affect the game in multiple different ways. You see him downfield, in the backfield, getting sacks, forced fumbles. Uh, he was making crazy plays from the start last year, week one, against his dad's former team. Uh, so, n- yeah, another insanely productive year for him. I- I'd imagine he keeps going. 28, George Kittle, pretty high up here. One of the better tight ends in football, highest ranked 14. Um, yeah, I mean, still got it. Another guy that hasn't lost a step. Very, very. I, I think what he's known for is just grinding out more yards uh, after the catch. And just make a big time plays for you know maybe the best team one of the best teams in football here. So George Kittle number twenty eight, number twenty seven. We got C J Shroud only into his second year, uh, and he has made the cut, uh, highest rank eight. Yeah, he could take that. You know, it's scary, scary to think what he could be this year after what he did as a rookie with the Texans. Uh, you know, and they made their team better. It's crazy to think what he could be just in year two. Like we could be talking about him as a top ten player, perhaps after this year. So that's why I think people were kind of people were probably ranking around eight, where like what he's going to be, and then people were probably ranking kind of where he was at just after a rookie season, which maybe they were ranking around the forties. So that kind of it kind of makes sense, I guess. Kind of left us with with him being at number twenty seven, twenty six. Roquan Smith, known as I think most people would say the second best linebacker. Him and Fred Warner in the battle uh, have a battle there. Uh, Fred Warner is yet to be uh, revealed on, on this list, so I would imagine he's still coming. Um, but Roquan at number 26, you know, another guy played for sometimes linebackers. They play for different schemes, different teams, different coaches. They kind of lose it a little bit, but equally as good with the Bears and then with the Ravens, actually probably a little bit better now, probably just because entering his prime and um, – the Ravens defense is really good playing around other great players. But, yeah, he had a consistent great year last year. Highest ranked 12 comes in at 26. Uh, back-to-back Ravens. Kyle Hamilton might be yeah, taking over as the best Raven defender when there's quite a few good ones. Um, highest ranked 15 and comes in at 25. Yeah, he had an absurd year last year. I, really, I said it before, one of the best games I watched last year, single games I watched from a from a single defender was him versus the Chiefs in the playoffs, you know, in the AFC title game, and he even allowed Travis Kelsey to get a touchdown in that game, but he was all over him, a perfect coverage. Um, you know, Kelsey had to go to him and tell him, you know, what a great game he had after that game. Like that, it was an absurd 
defensive outing. Um, games like that get me excited for a player like this. You know, another versatile safety. He can play every spot. He plays a lot in the slot as well, in the box, blitzing, getting in the backfield, but he's really good in man coverage down the field. Um, special, special player. Um, he's going to continue to climb uh, the ranks here. 24, Amon or St. Brown, super consistent. Maybe the best slot receiver in all of football. Really tough after the catch. Like, he gets open. He makes big time, he makes big time plays. And it's one of those guys where... There's a lot of really good players in the NFL. You're like, well, what are we going to get? We know they're really good. We know they could be elite, but it, it is a kind of a wide range of what we're going to get. This guy, we know we're going to get. We're going to get, no matter what, we are going to get really good football, really good play from Amon or St. Brown, um, who is huge for that Detroit Lions team. So um, highest ranked six, so very high ranking there. Number 24 overall in the fan voted Top 100 NFL players. 23, another receiver, A.J. Brown. Yeah, first half of the year last year, it looked like A.J. Brown was the best receiver in football. You know, Justin Jefferson was a little beat up at one point, so maybe that was the reason But um, that he, that he uh, was ahead of him. But that's what it looked like. Based on what I was watching last year, A.J. Brown, the first half of the year, was the best wide receiver in football. It looked like the toughest to deal with, toughest to guard, could do anything, uh, even, you know, him coming out of Ole Miss, I mean, he did a bit of everything. And him in Tennessee, did, again, did a bit of anything. But his best, I think the best part of his game was just after the catch and being nifty, you know, swift, being um, just all-around athletic. But, man, during during that first half of the season last year with the Eagles, that contested catch ability was absurd. You know, so that kind of what took had him take another step. Second half of the year, he kind of disappeared at times, you know, still was a factor. Uh, but if he would have completed that whole year, I think we'd be talking about him in the top 10 easily on this list. But we would say, you know, never know what the fans, I guess, what, what they're feeling. But highest ranked 14, number 23. Uh, hopefully we get more of the first half of the year connection with Hertz and A.J. Brown. Dexter Lawrence, big sexy, coming in at number 22. Uh, highest ranked 3. So, yeah, one of the elite interior defensive linemen. Uh, really good stopping to run, but collapsing the pocket, beating double teams. Uh, which creates for his teammates in terms of uh, getting after the quarterback and just causing pressures, always causing hurries. So, uh, big time player. Obviously, really took off not this past year, the year before, put the world on notice. Um, so he could actually continue to get better. Maybe more people were ranking him inside the top ten. He's at twenty two. Uh, Jamar Chase at twenty one. Jamar Chase has the potential. He has the ability inside of him to be top five player, top three player, like that good, like the best receiver possibly. Uh, you know, him and Jefferson was on that same LSU team. People thought of Chase as the better one so far. You know, Jefferson's easily been better, but Chase has that talent in him. Um, just needs to, you know, stay on the field, stay healthy. I'm not really too worried about that, you know, year to year. Uh, but catch the ball a little more consistently as well. There are some random drops, but he had makes some unreal plays. Um, so if he does those things, uh, he is on the brink of being that number one receiver, being a top 10, top five guy. So, But for right now, this rank does make, make some sense. Um, number 21, highest rank, six. But he can be that six guy. He very easily can. Patrick Sertan comes in at number 20, highest rank, seven. Some people view him as the best corner. Some people in, in football, some people view, view uh, Sauce Gardner as the best corner. But uh, you know, I know when um, we had those ranks with the executives, uh, coaches on ESPN making those ranks, they had Sertan the second as the best corner in football. You guys got him at number 20. Number 19, we got C.D. Lamb, who had a monstrous year last year, um, was arguably you know, one of the very best, best uh receivers very best offensive players in football it felt like he legit got better last year you can like feel it you could see it happening during the year just have some of his really dominant performances were i mean they were unbelievable like how dominant you like in, in awe how dominant they were it, wherever they got him the ball underneath you know middle of the field outside down the sideline deep downfield he was a major major problem especially after the catch it's after the catch so that that step up, he was already really, really good, and we knew he could be that guy. But that step up, I don't think people talk about it enough. It was actually, it was absurd. It was actually a big, big leap to where he was before, even though he was already good. So, thinking about it, like if he continues to grow off that, it is very, very scary. So, C. Lamb, number nineteen, somebody ranked him as high as three. Travis Kelsey, somebody ranked him as high as three. He's at eighteen. Yeah, he's a tough one to rank because he did take a step down last year, and it's like, does he do the same thing this year? Uh, but still such a dominant player, a guy that y you can game plan all you want for him, but you just really don't have 
you really don't have a, a a big answer for him. And you saw him show back up in key moments in the playoffs. Uh, so he comes at 18. Uh, yeah, if it wasn't for last year, like if he didn't take a little bit of a step down last year, I think you know he'd be in the top five probably. So I'd imagine that hurt him a little bit in a ranking like this, or he's at 18, 17. There's Nick Bosa, who actually thought you know maybe took a tiny bit of a step down last year, but was doubled more. Um, still a major major factor, but uh, yeah, another guy that somebody ranked him at five. Like he easily could be up there. He easily could be the best defensive player in, in, in football. So just like I think, I think he have a little bit better of a season this year, even though he was still phenomenal last year. But uh, maybe a little bit more of a season compared to uh, his defensive player of the year season, and that'll climb him back up um, easily above seventeen. Easily better than seventeen. Penny Sewell, number sixteen, who was kind of known as the best tackle in football last year, kind of battling Trent Williams for the best tackle in football. But I think well known as the the best tackle of the future. This guy is the guy of the future here for offensive linemen. Um, somebody ranked him as high as two. So, yeah, took a big step up last year. Has a great unit, great coaching staff around him, so could take another big step up this year. He comes in at 16. 15, Joe Burrow. Just got to stay healthy. Yeah, highest ranked three. I probably rank him, you know, in, in terms of the talent that he has, I'd probably rank him three. If it was easily top five, but you, yeah, some people probably, yeah, there's probably people that ranked him up there and there's probably people that factored in. He was just hurt all year. Do you know, do we trust him to stay healthy? Do we trust him to bounce back from the injury? So they're probably ranking him in the twenties around there and it resulted in him being in 15. So if he stays healthy, I'd imagine next year you guys would be ranking him much higher. Uh, Max Crosby at 14 highest rank number two. Uh, yeah, I'm a huge Max Crosby guy. I thought he was the best defensive player in football last year. He's just involved in, in every way, every play, uh, you know, such an impact, tackle for loss machine, sack machine, getting across the field, getting downfield, just everywhere. Uh, and he's only getting better as well. So I think he's a little low at 14. I would rank him two is pretty generous. Um, but I, I, I mean, a little generous. I would rank him top five. I'd rank him like three or four for me, uh, or, you know, probably four. Um, but yeah, at 14, big time defensive player. Uh, hopefully he gets more love in terms of being recognized for a potential defensive player of the year. I thought he should have been last year. Uh, 13, there's Fred Warner. Probably the, yeah has to be the top linebacker on this list. Highest ranked two somebody had him at. So that's a pretty good ranking for him. I, I'd probably have guy even though he's great, uh, one-of-a-kind line, linebacker. I'd probably have guys like Crosby and Burrow ahead of him. But um, and Nick Bosa's below him too. You could debate that one. Uh, but yeah, just a unique linebacker that makes plays in different ways. Uh, so deserving of 13, another 49er, net number 12, Trent, Trent Williams, highest ranked two. Uh, yeah, I'm not surprised about the highest ranked two. I'm a little, I'm actually another guy that I thought would be a little higher. I thought, you know, if I were to rank, I'd probably put him top five because he's just that important uh, to to the team, um, you know, with and without him and uh, just the impact that he makes in the passing and the run game. But he comes in at 12, so just outside the top 10. And then one more in the last video will be the actual top 10, so you can play along, guess who remains in the top 10 for that final video. You can guess the order if you want um, as well. But Micah Parsons comes in at number 11, so just missing that cut. And that's debatable, like if he should be top 10 or not. But highest ranked three. Um, yeah, just unbelievable what he's been able to do because he was a linebacker at Penn State. And just already being this good as an edge rusher. And remember, last year was actually the full, first year he was a full-time edge rusher. Because the year before, he actually split very close to 50-50 snaps at edge rusher and off-ball linebacker. So pretty crazy to think about how much upside he still has learning the position of being a full-time edge rusher. Um, I'd watch for him to be involved in different ways under Mike Zimmer, though. Uh, his simulated pressures. I think we'll see Parsons drop in coverage a bit, so could he get his hands on the ball, use that off-ball linebacker, you know, in his coverage skills, you know, mentality, uh, while still being a full-time edge rusher. So could be fun to watch. Uh, but again, the next video is the top ten. I'm excited to see who I have, I know who's on that list actually, because the ten remaining guys. But I'm excited to see the order of. Uh, how that comes off the board here, according to fans, according to you guys. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. Who's too low? Who's too high? What are you surprised about? Who's still left? If you want to order those guys, how they should be, how they will be, things like that. It'd be a lot of fun to debate those things uh, in the comments. But again, massive shout out uh, to Cam Sullivan for putting all these graphics together, putting this whole thing together, really, more than just the graphics. Uh, but uh, yeah, important links pinned in the comments. There's a playlist of this series on the channel. Uh, can't wait for that top 10. That's going to do it. Thanks for watching. 
Goodbye.